Hi everyone, welcome to episode nine of Enforcer and the Dude, Russell Ingle, Paul Morris, coming to you from the beautiful Norwell Motorplex, right up here near the Gold Coast in Southeast Queensland. We've got an action-packed show. We've got a very special guest, the Messiah for the Blue Oval. This man and his team has won Bathurst, has won championships, and if you're a Ford fan, stick around. You will love his interview. Uh, we've got latest motorsport news, MotoGP, uh, update with the dude who was at Supercars at Tail and Bend. Uh, I'll update you on TCR, because I was there and having a steer. Grassroots racing, we've got the Aussie racing cars. A crowd favorite, <laughs> absolutely. Of course, the fan comments and dude's life message. So, let's get rolling. Hey dude, Russ, back for another episode, episode hey. nine, it's hey. rolling on. You must have that cabinet maker on speed roll. The cabinet maker? Keep extending your trophy cake. <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> no, another yeah. trophy. Another trophy, another bit of, pl I was going to say tinware, but they're actually plastic. That's bloody, that's I, right. I reckon that's they're cool right. trophies, the TCR. Yeah, ones. they're right actually, yeah. yeah, that's all right, that's pretty good, yeah, it was good, got up there on, uh, finally on Sunday, didn't qualify very well. I, no, I, I saw uh, that, but. Yeah, yeah, ran out of talent and uh, didn't, didn't get it up there, but the thing was half quick and. Uh, yeah, it was, a, it was a good weekend. Uh, tough little things around Winton. Always hustling, eh? Oh, puffing and panting a bit. Uh, <laughs> hey, come out here in Norwell. I think you were down in Melbourne. I came yep. up here and spent the day. Had a bit of practicing. Yeah, in the, the 86 with the paddle shift. With the paddle shift. Yeah, that's why we've got that car. And we've also got a Suzuki Swift here now, just a front -wheel, bit of front wheel drive stuff. So. Oh, well, left wheel braking. See, I wanted to practice a little bit of that. Yep. Because uh, yeah, you're a French mate. Yeah, they're um, all left foot and yeah, yeah, the frog the when turbo he up. Yeah, yeah, he was doing a lot of that. So I uh, used a bit of it at Winton. I reckon it was a gain. So good. So, uh, so the, uh, the school, Norway school. Never too old to learn, Russ. Oh, always learning. Yep. Always learning. Hey, um, let's get straight into it. Stadium Super Trucks announcement came out since our last show. You were on it. You are all over it. You said it before any other media organisation. Good chance they're going to be back. They're back. They're back. It's a sealed deal. And I reckon... We're going to see, I reckon, Greg Biffle, NASCAR star, who's been racing the tr trucks in America. Right. The word is that he wants to come to the Gold Coast and race, so that'll be great wow. for the Gold Coast event to have an international driver. of uh, Toby Price is locked in for the Gold Coast. Okay. So um, You're going to be there? You're yeah, in? Yeah, I'm You're in. in. I'm in. Jesus, big field then. Yeah. Like, so Biffle has raced before, hadn't he? He's, yeah, he's, 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 he's done, done he's three or four year. races now. He's, he's a front runner over in the States in the races yeah, up yeah, there. So yeah. Matty Brabham. So some, some good household names coming there, which will be great for the event. Matty had another win at uh, Portland? Yeah, yeah. yeah so uh, Gavin Harlan had a, had a race win, and then Matt Brabham won the, the second race. So. Races have been awesome too. I've been watching Well, Portland it. was an Aussie watching fest. You had Will Power yep. in the Indy car. Yep. You had Hundle McArray in F2000. Oh, yeah, had yeah, had yeah. won both things. And Matty Brabham in the stadium truck. So oh. Aussie flags were flying everywhere over there. Now, Honey, uh, Hunter McElroy is leading the championship. Yeah, now, now he leads the championship. So pretty good stuff. That's in the 2000? Yep. Yeah, so... It's a pretty good effort. Like, it's, it's, the boy's coming on strong. Yeah, Formula Ford. There you go, mate. Yeah, yeah, it is. <laughs> um, let's touch quickly on Moto GP because, you know, I keep saying it, we're big Moto, Moto GP fans. The race was absolutely awesome at Silverstone, it was out of control. It was yeah, such a good lap, race. Pass, last corner. Yep, Alex Renz on Marquez. But I tell you what, all these young guys that have just fresh, um, especially, well, Cotteraro, we've been talking about him a lot. He threw it, he high-sided on the first corner, first lap. Uh, but all these young guys out of uh, Moto2, just coming on so strong, Morbidelli's going really well. Uh, I just I just look at, and, and I use that, that, that case study with MotoGP, the racing's good, the sport grows. And MotoGP is the only motorsport in the world that's actually growing, in my opinion. No, but it's, With followers? Well, the figures say it is. Yep. Um, and it's good to watch. And the, it's, the riders are gladiatorial, so... It's got everything. It's got everything you, it's got everything you, want, to, you want to go and look at, so... But then you, and then you look at Formula One, which is like watching paint dry. Yeah. And they're struggling. You know, they've got to cut costs, too expensive, losing viewers. 
But the whole you know. thing's over sanitised from a, you know, unless you're a real, real enthusiast that gets off on all the little nitty gritty things that they want to broadcast about and try and make stories about. But to the general person who just switches that on, they're probably going to turn it off after five minutes. I do. I struggle yeah. to stay awake. Yeah. I don't watch it anymore. I just look for the update in the morning. And yeah. But Moto GP, yeah. I, I don't. I don't take a breath. Like it's just no, such I'd a good. Yeah, I mean. it. How do you watch it? Do you stream it or you? Yeah, I watch it online. Yeah. Yeah. On the KO or something. Yeah. Or? Yeah. Something like that. Yeah, yeah. I think KO or something. Yeah. No. I, won't, I won't pump their tyres up. No, I just wondered how you did. Yeah, Cause, yeah, yeah. Because no. it's interesting to know, like. Yeah, well, so that's all you can watch it. Yeah, in Oz now. Unfortunately, you can't watch NASCAR on it anymore, which is. Which I've got is the app for NASCAR, which is great. Is that yeah going across? Yeah, right? the track pass is really good. Okay, I'll have yeah. to get onto that because I sort of missed not watching NASCAR this year. So. Yeah, it's pretty good. Hey, uh, you were at the supercar, so this is this is your segment because yep. you were there doing Super Three with Brock Feeney. Yeah, Brock Feeney yeah. had a good result. We did. We were fast, and um, yeah, he, he scored enough points, still leading the championship. So. Yep. He's on to Sandown and see if he can win it. But again, the race there between the top three or four guys in Super 3, they actually put the main going guys to shame. Really? Yeah, yeah they, they were passing each other. Um, so, you know, they could pass and hustle and move around, which yep. when you look at the, that car, it doesn't have a heap of aero. So that's what you think it is. So, so to fill everyone in, the Super 3 the uses... They're 10-year-old cars. That's a Project Blueprint, Pro as they call project it. Project Blueprint right, car. Okay. You've got these kids that have come out of go-karts, Formula Ford, and they're racing each other. They're not blocking each other. They're passing. They're, there's moves going on. There's actually a car race going on. So, And then you, the main game comes on, and you're like, it's a snooze fest. Because the cars are so pinned. Yeah, and I wasn't the only... like, Even Jess Dane put a thing up on, on um, her Instagram and said... The Super Three guys showed the Super, showed the main game how to do it this weekend. Yeah, right, right. Yeah. So it could not only drive it, but you reckon it's car orientated as well. I that think car it's just lends itself better. Yeah. Less aero. Less aero dependent. Well, it's, right. That's got to be it. That's a big indicator. Yeah. And we said it here when we did the cost cutting things. We we, we showed the difference between uh, car of the future, Project Blueprint cars, and and all the differences in between. And mate, and it's a G too. I think you know you. The cars aren't full carbon cars. They've still got a lot of metal hanging on them, mm. those cars. So the weight's, you know, out around the car. It's not, yeah, you look right. at a modern day car, it's just a tube with a bit of tube frame with some yeah, carbon yeah, hanging yeah. off it. So Mate, maybe, maybe you've got to back look, to the future. Back, look backwards to go forwards. Maybe. Yeah. Hey, uh, 2020 calendar, massive reaction to that as well, that uh, Ipswich um, and Phillip Island has been dropped off. 2020 calendar. Like. Well, the Phillip Island one for me is probably the the commercially it's too expensive. Like it's yep. the the fee to go and do that from the from the track owner is, is is a big number. So that one probably makes sense. It doesn't. It's just a commercial decision. They can't make money out of the event. Yep. And then the facilities out at Queensland Raceway aren't up to scratch. You know, it's there's been no real money invested in the thing. It's a grassroots track. It's mm getting used all the time it's still there for plenty of people using that track and having a good time but it's not really up to the standard to have a supercar race yeah and the government aren't going to put any money into it they're already tapped doing the gold coast uh, and townsville yeah so the money's dried up yeah so that would have to be something to do with it as well that physically they can't get and the money, track owner, money to john upgrade. tetley can make more money running his his events than he can dealing with cams and yeah. supercars so he's not interested in improving the facility for one race week in a year where the facility is perfect for what he needs to do with it. So, sure. it, so it, there is reasons behind it. Yeah. So it's all, it's all logic at the end of the day. It's yeah. a shame with Phillip Island because it's a beautiful facility. Cars look fantastic, uh, you know, visually on TV. And, but it's a shame. That's, that's, well, the, one, that's the one that's shame. I'm a lot sure of, if the, a lot if of history. The, there, if, the, so. if the fee to rent the track was a sensible price, there'd be a deal done. But yeah. I remember back to when I was on the board, it was more, always one of the most expensive. Most expensive, yeah. yeah. All right. Um, sticking with supercars, again, news, driver movements all around the place as well. Um, you know, there's Mostert, James Courtney, Scott Pye, Simona Di Silvestre. Man, it's, uh, there's, there's a lot there that either haven't got drives, um, don't know where they're going to end up, and Mostert might not be as clean cut as everyone thinks going to Walkinshaws because of some news coming out 
um, just in the last few days that their naming rights sponsor, Mega Limited, um, yeah. has gone into receivership. Well, that to me, that always had warts on it because it's pretty common knowledge that they failed to pay Tickford on time and they had to, that they basically had to settle on a deal. Yeah. So, and then they switch teams and go to another team and don't pay them as well and, and fold up. So if I was Chaz, yeah, it, it, you go to the team that can pay you first, you know, if mm. you want to get paid. So it'd be interesting to see what, what happens there. That's so it looked like it was going to be a done deal. Maybe he has to backtrack a bit and repair some damage back at Tickford. I don't, there's, there's enough horsepower in the ownership of, of that team to, to make it continue, but losing that sponsor is definitely, you know, they're, they're going to be three or four million short somewhere. Someone's going to have to come up with that. Yep. Someone's going to have to write a cheque, which will probably come back to the team owners. Now, I can't see Michael Andretti wanting to write a cheque. He's not that sort of mm-hmm. guy. He's in, the, he's in the business of motor racing to make money and to win the car races. So... It's going to be a tough sell then. It's going to be interesting to see where that all plays out with Mostert then because James Courtney, I, I believe that it was actually James's decision not to go again next year. Well... That's, that's the read that I got. Well, um, if, you know, if, if they hadn't re-signed him by now and you'd, you'd know the writing was on the wall, so yeah. James has probably done the right thing and got in first. You know? Yeah, OK. Yeah. And so then, it could be more mutual more than... Yeah, and and there's been a fair bit of press around James. He's he's been get mm. he's been getting a, getting some more column inches in in newspapers and stuff. Yep, yep. I reckon he's hired a publicist again, probably. <laughs> he's been been out there in the media. So well, there's something going on there. Yeah. And look, he's he's a wheeler dealer as well. He's been around the sport long enough, so he's he's put they're putting something together there. But uh, there's a lot of rumours of of different teams. I know Charlie Schwerkoff's names come up yep. as a possible that could, second that car. That could be a good deal for and him. And there's this second Sydney team that's all of a sudden propped out of the universe. So that yeah, that's, there's some government funding there. That's been around. The funding is revolving around establishing a Sydney-based team. All right. and, but the funding's to do with building a facility at Sydney Motorsport Park for mm-hmm. a team to be based there. Okay. So they can have a... So know, that's genuine. That, if that's genuine. Said, yeah. The money's not there to run the team. The money's to, to build a facility. Right, okay. But, but yeah, you Pretty enticing, have, though, if it's for anyone that wants to run out of Sydney. It would be. Pick e- expensive. Well, the big thing you've got, to run out you've, of, but, you've, yeah. all the teams are based Melbourne or, or Queensland based. Yep. So personnel is the biggest thing in, in this industry. You've got to pick some people up and move them to Sydney because... Big um, cost. Big, well, you, who's going to want to move? So that's going to be the... You know, if you're a mechanic or an engineer on that car and say, hey, do you want to move from the Gold Coast and go live in Sydney? Yep, yeah, yeah. Probably not. Probably yeah, good not. luck. Yeah, yeah. If you're in Melbourne, you might go, oh, that, that sounds all right. So It's not as big a jump. Yeah. Okay. Well, at least the weather's getting warmer the further north yeah. you go. Has Simona, she off? Fly to out of here, Formula E land or something else? Or do you reckon oh, she wants to stick around? I don't think so. I, I think her earning potentials to earn money is probably better here in Australia than it would be anywhere else. Yeah. Um, she's driving the car really well. Yeah. Like, it'd be, she, she'd be good to see her in another car to see her true potential. Yeah, like... I just think if she's in the right environment with the right team, and, it would t- and I've said this, I would, I would, she should have done anything she could to get in that triple eight car, and yep. the financial game would have, would have come. But you watch her race, she's, she can wheel that car, and she's a genuine, generally driving the car very good. So mm. she's not there just because of her gender. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Scotty Pye, he's another one that's on, on the list of maybe, maybe not, might be going into. You know, co-pilot land, yeah, co-driver right. land, but it'd be shame because he'd be uh, on the top of my list. Actually, Scott, actually, I think he's had a really good year considering what he's had to play with. Yeah, and if you look at where he's been, like he out of Penske, into Penske, back out. What I like about him, you know, he can win a race. Mm-hmm. That race where he was dark, he was on slicks, it was in the wet, he had everyone breathing down his throat, and he got the job done at the Grand Prix. Like that would, would yep. have been one. That was the easiest race to lose. Yeah, yeah. And he didn't lose Especially it. Especially in those conditions. In those conditions, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, agree. So you know that guy can get the job done. He, if mm. You get him and the right team and the right people around him, he, he can be a champion. Yeah, yeah, agreed. And, yeah. and, and on that note, I thought I'd, I'd ask you about um, who the standouts are so far of the 2019 season. Um, 
in my book, I, I've got I've got a couple which I've put on my list uh, yep. of what I've seen this year. But but generally, that compared to and, and let's exclude Scott McLaughlin out of this, because with the team he's in, the equipment and who he is and the way he's going at the moment, let's let's just park him. So yeah. the standouts of everyone well, he's else. He's a standout because he's he lifted his game he, he and he's lifted it again. Yeah, but he's in a class of his own. He's let's in a class of his own, and, yeah. and he's in a team of his own. Yeah, as, as well. So so they they're just in a, in a, on a different level. Um, so I'm going to exclude him. So this is everyone else. I reckon Nick per Percat and Andre Heimgartner yeah, have done do, a really good job. Done doing a, doing a great job. As far as racing forward. Qualifying yep. pretty well, especially Andre. He's been the clear standout in the Nissan team. Uh, but I reckon Nick Perkett's really yeah, uh, shone he's, in, in he's, racing, he's, racing forward. He's always been a good racer, mate, yep. Nick. So um, he, his drive on the on the weekend and in race two on Sunday was was, was a ripper, yep. you know. Fastest Holden, knocking out that time. So Do you agree with that? Anyone else do you think's oh, I think has been a... I think Anton's doing a, oh, a, a, a ripper yeah, job. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. That's rude not to include him, yeah. And I think Will Davison's doing a good job too. He's got another lease of life with yeah, that car. Yeah, another lease of life. And, and I think he's you know getting the most out of the Mustang where Cam Waters and, and Lee aren't. So he he's, he's deserves to be in that car. He's doing a really good job with mm -hmm. it. No, okay, let's um, let's hop over to. Oh, we had TCR at Winton. Um, so I'll give I'll give you a bit of bit of briefing on that um, again. Um, Racing was racing was good. Um, uh, had a few new steerers in there. They had a test day on the Monday, which I thought was really interesting and a good initiative of um, actually having potential new drivers for next year come yeah, out and test the car. Yeah, and I actually you know, had so a few they, of those they, guys. They, they vetted all of them beforehand, yeah. so you just didn't get some Fred in there. Someone that's no, it was good. There were some good so. guys there. I had a few few of those drivers actually came here before they went down there to yep. get themselves up to speed and. And which I thought was a good idea to prepare, prepare themselves what they had to go and do. Yeah, I, 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 I thought that was a really good initiative in getting people interested in the category for next year, getting ahead of the, ahead of the game a little bit. Um, and uh, but again, the weekend, man, the, the the show itself though, there was no one there. There was a, a rung watcher brung and some prototype class, and and that was it. So as a race weekend, again, really really struggled, but. Uh, I actually did an interview with Matt Braid, which yep. we'll show separately from this show. Uh, but it's really interesting. He went through a lot of things and in where it's going and, and to fix the show side of it up because you need you need more categories there. You, you need something Just for the to make you, on the hill. Yeah, to make you want to go there and watch it and go through the gate and watch it. Yeah. You, you need more. Could it be a one-day meeting? Well, that was two days. Winter yeah. was two days. Two days wasn't bad. If they yeah. separate that silly Wednesday, uh, Sunday race, sorry, uh, and not having it back to back and spread that out, Saturday was pretty full on because it was 50 minute practice session, 30 minute qualifying, and a race. You know, so it was actually. So I, I it was watched a pretty it on the day. TV, mm. and um, obviously the TV production was, was, is what it is, and yeah, we've yeah, already given yeah. us a, a bash about that, so yep. let's not beat them up on that. They're doing the best they can with the budget they got. Budget, yeah, yeah. Um, but. I enjoyed that back to back. It kept me watching. Really? I, yep. I'm like, that's an, the the gap between that race was enough to leave, keep me watching the TV and not go away and do something else. Yeah, so, okay. So I, I enjoyed that part, but what it did show was there's there's some good cars and then there's some absolute shit heaps in there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And and there's there's no money being spent on spare parts, maintenance or anything. So the 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 Subaru mm. and the, the stuff that Kellys are running. It's, like you can't be at the back ripping a drive shaft off a road car. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then bolting yeah. it on on a thing like it's, Unfortunately, it's a three hundred dollar part. I did a bit of digging around on the weekend about this. I, I didn't realise that. I mean, the Subaru. I mean, I think those two are it. Yeah. It's the only ones they built. And I thought the Renault was actually a more of a produced car. No, it's a bit of an orphan too. Yeah, that's an orphan. Yeah. So there's only sort of four of them kicking around the world as well. So I think because they're so new and they've made so many of the other makes. Yeah, especially the Audi that I'm racing and uh, uh, the the the, uh, the Vauxhall as well. You know, uh, there's so many of them kicking around uh, the Alphas that unfortunately um, they've just had no development. And yeah, so they so, just so GRM are doing the development and and Kelly's trying to fix the things. But on are the you run. better off just going? You know what? Let's like obviously the series owners have invested in lobbing cars yes, at yep, like yep. okay. 
They bought yep. some cars and said to Kelly's, can you run these? Yep, we're running them. It's got some other, it's got some other manufacturers in there, but mm. they'd be better off having another four or five Hyundai's and, and some more Audis than having Absolutely. some pus pile things that are yep. broken down all the time. Well, with the reader that I'm getting, they're trying to get the, um, uh, uh, the rights to actually uh, develop the cars yeah. themselves. So I, I, and, I and, and then maybe even start supplying other countries. But that's a you separate, know, well, that's so. a separate, yeah, separate for sure. deal. But, but, that's, that's what but it's a TCR, hard way to do it. But it's dumb, mate, because it's, yeah. TCR isn't about that. TCR is I can go and buy a car and I can go and race go it, race and it. it's yeah, a good yeah. car. And if you look at the Hyundai's, that's, that's a good thing. Yeah, yeah. But Will Brown, Will the Swill Brown, mm. is he the Scott McLaughlin of TCR? It's pretty fast. He was, he was so fast. I mean, he was, he, he was half a second a lap. Just, every session. Just blazing. Every, than, than anyone else. Yeah. Like there's, I mean, he was doing things on that track in particular that no one else was. So, so obviously uh, that Hyundai is is a yeah, it's a good it's a it, good toy. It, it's it's a good toy and, yeah, yeah, and yeah. driven right. Yeah, there's plenty left in it. Plenty oh, left in it. But, but anyway. that's the only car that comes with a playbook from the manufacturer. Yep. When you look at it, it comes. Yeah, if you got understeer, do this. It. Yep. It's it's anyway. We'll we'll run like I said. We'll run this uh, interview I did with Matt Braid. He's a director of ARG Group, and he's given us a full rundown on, on what their plans are for 2020 and beyond. So it's quite an interesting yarn. So look out for that. But I did enjoy watching the race. I thought it was I good. Did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It wasn't. It wasn't. It seemed alright. It didn't go better. Next one's uh, Sandown. That'll be quite good because S5000 uh, makes its debut there. Yeah. Rubens Barrichello's Are you having a drive? No, I, I didn't really stick my hand up for it. I, a bit. I don't know. I'd rather sit back and watch what it's about. Yeah. Okay. First, to be quite honest. So who they got? Maybe Matty what? Brabham. Yep, Matty Brabham. Swill uh, Brown. Yep. Uh, Rubens Barrichello. And I don't know who's filling so the rest of the seat. They're so gonna there's about 12 cars, I think. So. Lead more drivers in. So that, yeah, yeah. that, so that'll be good it'd to be, watch. Yeah, it'd be good. And there's, uh, well, Super 3 are there. So actually, Sandown would be a really good event. That, that, Great that, event. That should be quite, that'd be really good. So There'd be some good that'd racing That'd be worth there. coming out to. So, Easy uh, to get to. You've got nothing to do that weekend. Make in sure you Melbourne, come out to get that out one. there. Absolutely. Uh, I want to really give a mention to Oscar Pastry. We actually, I met him out here. He was out here doing some. Yeah, uh, we did some driver coaching and stuff right. with him before he went back to Europe. Now, Oscar's uh, three uh, weeks ago. Yeah, he's running the Formula Renault Euro Cup, yep. which is super competitive series. Like, this is the stepping stone uh, to Formula One. So, it normally goes there, then you do uh, GP3, GP2, F1. So, this is it. This is, this is what it's all about. Uh, massive amount of competitive drivers in there. Two pole positions and two race wins um, at the last round, and now leads a championship. It's got four rounds to go. Yeah, massive achievement. Yeah, and we need corporate Australia to get behind this guy because he could go all the way. He'd yeah, be our next F1 guy for sure. Yeah, absolutely. Well, especially the way he's going as well. So, rightio. Um, on to our. Oh, knock at the door. You expecting anyone? Yeah. Oh, g'day, mate. Looks like Ross Day. <laughs> <laughs> Come in, mate. Old How times. <laughs> There you go. Oh, there you go. Hey, Roscoe. Russell. Very good. A very special guest. Come in, mate. Pull up a chair at the bar. How you been? Yeah, good. Good? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> How's yeah. life on the other side of the fence? Uh, oh, well, you're not. Well, well. It's, it's much, much more um, relaxed than what it used to be. So it used to be um, just consume you, the whole thing, you know. It was the drivers you had. Mainly. Yeah, <laughs> got a lot, of, a lot of energy. They sucked it out of you. Yeah. <laughs> I reckon a few of them gave me grey hairs over the years. Yeah, there's a few stories there. Now, now Roscoe, we were, when we were, we were talking about who, because we, we really like getting guests on the show and we've had some crackers so far. So no pressure. Don't let us down, mate. Um, but your history, your history with m motorsport, uh, the championships you won here in V8 supercars, uh, just the whole lot, and a racer yourself as well. Yeah, a long time ago, Russell, and and I was lucky. Um, I won the Gold Star in New Zealand in '77, '78 series, but former was, Ford. No, uh, Atlantic, Atlantic Car, Pacific Car. Oh, okay. Right. Yeah, but I, I was lucky because I finished every race, and um, you know the car was really good and. There was good guys with good budgets, and yeah. anyway, we fluked it. So now we've got a bit of a slide night. Let's go. Oh, All right, this is going to be... They won't even be in colour. This is, <laughs> actually, they're not. This is a Ross Stone slide night. All right, yeah. so we're going to take you for a trip down memory lane. Oh, Are man. you ready, Roscoe? No. All right, no, you're not. But 
this this will be good. It's good fun. Now look, tell us a bit about all these rigs. And 22 seem to be a popular number I noticed amongst your open wheelers. So this is New Zealand. Yeah, and 22 two to, comes two from. Two. Yeah, when when I was young at that age, Graham McRae and 5,000 cars always used 22, and I, yeah. I I thought he was the man. So. But okay. Cuda 2 was a car that Jimmy and I built. Right. And yeah. Formula Ford. And um, Now, you won the Formula Ford Championship twice. No, I know. I didn't. That's wrong, wherever you've got that from. Really? Yeah. Right so, to the North Island and the South Island. Island. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. No, no, I never won the Formula Ford Championship. Oh, but right. The, after I'd sold the car <laughs> the following year, or two years later, uh, Mike Finch won a championship in that car. Maybe that's what it was. Yep. So maybe it was a car that won a car for a championship. Yeah. But so you and Jimmy built this rig. Yeah, yeah, we built that. Yeah. yeah. Just um, in, in Tuakau, which is not far from Pukekohe. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yep. So it's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah. We had a service station at the time, and um, we were very disciplined. We never worked on it at uh, during working hours, if you right. like. Right. But as soon as five o'clock come around. Do another few hours that night and get yeah. it done. Yeah, get well, it done. Well, funny you should say that. So uh, we've got we've got a few more now. This was the Formula Pacific yeah. New Zealand Championship. Yeah. So what year was this? This was. Uh, well, that's probably seventy-seven or. Look at the people on the hill at Pukekohe there. Yeah, yeah, we big crowd. Huh? crowd. So, well, so that was for the New Zealand Grand Prix. Well, the guy with the back to you is Keke yeah. Rosberg. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. Right there, it's Keki Rosberg. I was, saying, uh, I was filing through some old photos, and yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, and that's Keki Rosberg there. So yeah. he he was a he was a frequent over yeah. to the event. Yeah, for a few years he came over, and he was always special. You know, sometimes you drive against people. Yeah. And, and um, just you always knew that he was special, and he went on to win a world championship. You know. Yeah. And some of the other drivers who were really good, you go, oh, you know, given the right amount of tyres and testing and mileage, you know, you could have been in there with them, but there were some really good drivers come out there. Dave McMillan, the guy um, with the uh, needs a haircut there. Yeah, 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 yeah they all he, went haircut. He, he, was, um, <laughs> he was really fast too, and he, he lives in America now. He looks like uh, Morris said. <laughs> it does, doesn't he? <laughs> Yeah. So, yeah. All, so all these guys used to come out to do the yeah. pre-European pre before the European Championships. Yeah. Yeah, they did. Yeah. Hmm. So there's some name. There's some big names over there. Oh, 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 oh who slipped this one in? Where the hell did you get that from? <laughs> I don't know. Is that, is that your brother or son or something? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, there's Roscoe in his full. So and uh, you know that yeah. haircut's come back in fashion now. And I've I played a lot is. of rugby, so you can see the teeth missing, the tooth yeah. missing. There. Oh, yeah. Okay. Now tell tell me about. The Pacific car was that one you built yourself? Yeah, that was one that Jimmy and I built at that yeah. at that um, workshop there. Right. Um, so they had a BDA engine. Yep. So um, popular car. They're called Atlantic cars. Yep. Elsewhere, but Pacific cars here and right. in Australia. And um, that looks like it's at Timaru, which is yeah, a right. place called Timaru, Level. Yeah. 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 How's the spectators? Just up on the hill there, no guardrails, just all. Yeah, Everyone's well, having a good time. Yeah, yeah, and if there's photos from Teratonga, that was a famous track for all the farmers to come with their livestock crates on the back and then they put chairs up on top. So, Is that right? Yeah. It's great seeing pictures like this too, I reckon, when, when racing was really raw. Well, you didn't go off because you yeah. wanted to survive. There's Jimmy. There's Jimmy. He <laughs> had a bit more hair back in those days. Yeah. Is yeah. it 22 still? Yeah. yeah. Had the BP pumps in and off he went. Yeah. yeah it's a good looking rig too, Roscoe. Yeah, yeah, it was good. Now, that's, now a, that, that's a bit of a story. We'd been to a race at Timaru. Yeah. yeah. And we were trying to make the ferry at Picton to get to Wellington. Right. And it was a long weekend. Couldn't get accommodation anywhere. So that was a friend of mine, Norm Langshire. He had a BT34 um, Chevron. Yeah. And he, anyway, so we couldn't find any accommodation. So we stopped, <laughs> wheeled the car out. Yeah. Yeah. And um, slept in the trailer for the night. That's what I brought it up because when I see everyone <laughs> in the back of the trailer, I thought, I bet you they're sleeping in there. <laughs> and you wake up in the morning, you go in there when it's dark, and you wake up in the morning and there's a mountain just there and there's snow not that far away. Oh, so, beautiful. Yeah. Proper racing though, wouldn't it, Dave? Yeah. Like, that's the sort of racing. And, that, and the transit van there, that was the only uh, transit that I had yeah, in those good. days. Yep. That's the Cuda 3. Yeah, that's, that's an aluminium monocoque car. Yeah. Unbelievable. It's yeah. a good looking thing. And, and you uh, made the whole thing. So the whole thing was made in that service station, were you? Yeah, yeah. Yep. 
Incredible. Mm. So this is where you got, this is obviously where the relationship between yourself and Jimmy got going. Yeah. Of Jimmy, you know, engineering and mechanic and then yourself driving and yeah. this is how the whole relationship fought. Yeah, exactly. Basically. Exactly. And actually the funny thing about that is when we built it in that workshop, across the road was a TAB. Yep. And our argon welder, whenever we were welding aluminium, <laughs> they would give us a call and say, can you leave it because race three is going to be on because it would affect their radio and stuff. So, uh, <laughs> oh, <is that> right? <laughs> so anyway, <laughs> we got through it. We got through it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's good, good days, eh? Yeah. And, uh, and there's Jimmy. Uh, I, I had to throw this one in because there's Jimmy. And uh, I don't think he'd get his shorts any tighter, but he's... Um, that was the go Jeez, he's a fit-looking dude back then too. Yeah. Uh, and the, the guy on the right is Graham Cook who yep. is still involved in motorsport in New Zealand now, mainly with Formula Ford engines and things like that. Yeah, cool. Yeah, yeah good days. And I, I, wonder, I wanted to sort of go through all this to start with because, uh, you know, we, I, we speak about it all the time, Paul, that the best team owners, I reckon, are racers. 100% they are, mate. <laughs> you, you, either good drivers or good engineers and they under, understand what it takes. So, for sure, at every, every, even Roger Penske was a driver before he become a successful businessman and team owner. I think it's very important that you, you have that grounding in the sport. Yeah, yeah I, think, I think though too, once you get into the team ownership thing, if you've been racing, yeah. is to make sure you're not coming forward with too much on voice on how to drive, because everybody's different how they drive. Yeah, yeah. And, and they've got the talent to do it themselves. So you just, you're there to support them more than that you know what they need yes yeah, yeah, yeah. from a support yeah. mechanism yeah, yeah. Or, and sometimes you understand what they're going through yeah 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 no so uh, and that's that's why i wanted to go through that because i think every everyone knows about stone brothers racing here and, yeah. and the team and the championships you run all the rest of it but not many know, people know about the past you know where mm. you came from and that sort of thing that's and pretty and, cool and, and new zealand's so strong here as far as you know the driver talent that's been coming over and, and new zealand as a as a motorsport community it's massive yeah like well it always has been my i've got another brother jimmy's the oldest and then there's um two girls and then another brother and kevin was in formula one with mclaren's for years in the days when they'd go away to a race with mm six or eight people for a Formula One race with two yeah. cars, you know. So how did you form back here? Uh, so both of you went your own ways? Yep. And then come back here? Well, my other brother Kevin and I had a workshop for a while and we mm. ended up converting, New Zealand wanted to be self-contained in energy. Yep. Yeah. So we converted a lot of cars to run on compressed natural gas and also LPG, yep. okay. which is good fuel. And yeah. anyway, you, you miss the racing. You do miss the racing because I sort of tried to as I've said, close the chapter. Um, yeah. You missed the racing, and then um, I went up to Malaysia and stuff with Kenny Smith, looking after his car. And and you never you know, <laughs> hard to get out of the system. Yeah, it's hard to get out of the system. So, a long story short, I got a phone call one day to go and um, give a hand a car. Brox Larry had left Brox Place, and there was yep. a car to be delivered to a Kiwi guy, and it, it was basically a bare chassis. And with Larry gone, you know, it was a bit confusing down there. So mm -hmm. um, I went in and we built that car, and that was an 85. Yep. And we'd done uh, Oran Park, Sandown, and Bathurst. And then it went back to New Zealand for a summer series there. Mm. And then I ended up with Graham Crosby. Oh, yeah. And that, oh, was my, okay. that was my first full year in Australia in 1986. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 And so then you ended up with the car that's on the screen now, in the, uh, yeah, with Alan well, Jones. Were, so, so you were quarter owners, yourself and Jimmy. With Jonesy? Yeah, with Jonesy. No, no, we were, we were third owners each. Third, so okay, yeah. right. Yeah, but there was a bit in between. I, I worked for Dick as yeah, yeah, team yeah. manager for a few years and we had a good run there. Yeah. And, um, yeah, and, um, and that's when Jimmy... Were you with the Oxo Sierras? Uh, no, no, that was the year before me, but we was ran it? Sierras in 88 out 88. of Sydney. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And then when I went to, um, and then we ran Medeki from up here on the coast. Um, and then I went to Dixon, um, 92, I think, 92. just for one year yep. to look after the Sierras as the Falcon was getting built. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, that makes sense. But the yep. first Falcon was getting built, Neil Lowe. That was the Cheetah. Well, it, <laughs> it's a band, isn't it? Like no, a panel no. or something? Oh, it's sort of weird because 
the rules were floating all over the place, you know. Right. And <laughs> and people were taking the Mickey out of what rules were there. So anyway, long story short, Jimmy eventually joined DJR halfway through that year, and then he took on the build of a brand new um, of Falcon. The first Falcon. Yeah. That complied to the rules. Yeah, and mm -hmm. and effectively that's the same Falcon all the way through until. Yeah until the car of the future. Yeah, that's right. So yeah, you've been right. with Ford for a long time then. I mean, I mean, yeah. that's, and that's the other reason we wanted to get you on the show is because yeah. we, um, we've had Roland Dane on and obviously representing Holden. But, but when, when you look at Ford, yeah. you're probably the longest serving Ford when you say about the Sierra and then Dick Johnson and then your yeah. own team, well, Alan Jones and then your own team. You've been yeah. pretty loyal to the Blue Oval. Yeah, we were. Uh, they were good to us too. It was really strange, the relationship with Ford for a start, because you had DJL was strong and then Cedo was there. Yep. Um, but it, it was strange because they would arrive usually in December and say, next year, here's your deal. Yep. You know? And then once we started making headway, um, they signed us to a five-year contract. And as soon as we got that five-year contract, we could plan Plan ahead. Yeah, plan ahead, and we got CNC equipment and yep. all sorts of stuff, you know. Got going. Yeah, mm. and that improved our engines, and and that was... Uh, got the enforcer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He was cheap. He was cheap. <laughs> Jeez, I wish you told me that at the time. Or I would have put a bigger invoice in. Uh, so, Alan Jones, and, yeah. then, and then you ended up... So, through that period, you ended yeah. up buying out the Alan. whole thing. Alan. Yeah. Yeah, to the and, whole deal, and, and that's and that was a formation of Stone Brothers Racing. That's right. Yeah, yeah, and we um, stayed in that same factory which Alan owned. Okay. Um, until we built our own place in '99, and mm. we still, I'm still mucking around there now. There's some yeah. some cool things over there when you yeah. go and have a look. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, it's, it's a long while in one place. Yeah, 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 it is. Yeah. Yeah. So that was always, I mean, was always the goal to get your own. Own team was that the long term vision or, or yeah yeah or, it was originally just... after we left Dix we were going to just to ha have a um, a single car team and just take it on a you know an Isuzu truck or whatever with just on an open trail and put a cover on it you know yeah. and just work our way into V8 racing but then Alan came along and we had Philip Morris um, support for the one year after the end of the cigarette. But yep. that was all done on um, the uh, conferences, all, all revolved around oh, okay. sales yeah. conferences mm -hmm. and yep. stuff. So anyway, that lasted for a year, and then we done another year with Alan, and um, then we brought him out. And uh, uh, Stone Brothers uh, Racing started in 98 properly. As, oh, was it? Is yeah, it as just Jimmy yeah. and I, yeah. Oh, okay, right. And in our first year, we took Brighty on. That's, That's right, yeah. 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 It was a... It was a Bit of a funny story. I'm not sure how much time we got, but yeah, yeah. I went to a sponsorship <laughs> meeting um, because we'd bought Alan out, and uh, sponsor said, "Oh no, you need an experienced driver. That's you right. won't get anything with a young Heard driver." This story, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I said, "Oh, Brighty was already as we were as I was at that meeting. He he was making pl plans to shift up to the coast." Yeah. Um, so I said, "Well." If that's where it is, I'm going to have to leave the meeting because I've got a lot to do. <laughs> so anyway, um, I left the meeting and then uh, 30 seconds after I heard somebody else coming down the stairs, it was Glenn Duncan from Pertec. Yeah. Yep. And he was a minor sponsor in that project. Yep. And anyway, we talked. And eight o'clock the next morning, we had Pertec Racing. Great, and we're away. So that was a big. That's a, that's, that's a big, big move. Yeah, it was a big move. Yeah. Because um, if you go back, you had Pruitt and AJ in the car right at Bathurst, didn't you? Yeah, and we then, did. Then and you used and Bridie as the third driver. Yeah, yeah. And you got to slot him in. Yeah. And then Bridie just showed how good he was. Yeah, yeah, he, yeah, yeah. It was always good because we'd tested yeah. him too. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And he was so, he was a good steerer. Yeah, yeah. Bridie was a good steerer. Because Pruitt was yeah, slow, right? He yeah. Was, he was struggling. Yeah, 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 yeah. Scott, I guess, I guess right hand drive. Yeah, no. Yeah. What, all, all the things that go with that. Yeah. And um, yeah, uh, Pruitt, with no doubt, is he's a. Long Top driver, yeah. Yeah. yeah, and then with Bridie and Stephen Richards, yeah, you, Stephen you Richards, Bathurst, so. yeah, yeah, we we had a quick car, but we couldn't put a lap together just because of traffic, and it was a lot yeah. different in those days. Yeah, anyway, uh, we had a big shunt. Just I think it was a bit out of frustration with Bridie, so we fixed the car, and then um, come qualifying, we didn't qualify that well because a, a shock was still damaged in the rear that we thought was all right. So. That's right. 
anyway. You so pitted we, early. You're the first yeah, guys to yeah. to do the pit stop at the start, not at the yeah, end. Yeah, yeah. So you're off sequence and everyone pitted yeah. at the and end then, and you guys had fuel in hand and away Then we went. knew we had the speed <laughs> yeah. and um, we, did, we just undercut a lot of them. Yeah. Right? And, um, Race and then, yeah. then we were running second and Scapey and them were quite strong. That's right. But the next minute he, he disappeared off at... Um, uh, you know, down in the chase yeah, yeah. with a tyre failure, and we were running British Jones as well, so we just bought a home. You know, it, was a, home. it, was, it wasn't a happy hunting ground, Bathurst. After that, though, was it? I mean, <laughs> no. championships were good to you, but yeah, Bathurst was yeah, damn yeah. hard. It was tough. Yeah, we ended up on the podium quite a few times, but never. We were in a position to win it one other time, and the car got tied up with a a lap car, and um, that was the end of that race. But um, well, that was the Tony, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah it was, yeah. Yep. So, along the way of the Stone Brothers, which is an incredible record, incredible record of drivers that you've had through the place. I mean, I mean, when, when, you, when you reel them off, mm. I mean, you've probably forgotten half the ones that you've had in there. But when you look at, you know, Shane Van Gisberg and James Courtney, Marcus, Jason Bright, Craig Baird, Wayne Gardner, Tony Longhurst, Tim Slade, Lee Holdsworth, David Bernard, Far out, and not to mention developer series with Scott McLaughlin and Mark Winterbottom. I mean, that's a pretty impressive record of drivers that have gone on to achieve a lot of things. Yeah, in yeah. I guess, the, you know, on that list, there's one guy I don't feel as a team we got the best out of for mm. a lot of reasons, um, but that was Craig Beard. Yeah, but, okay. But we won our first race with that's him. That's right. Yeah, at, yeah, at yeah. At Phillip Island, and we decided a certain lap time was going to be the go. Yeah. Because the tyres really just manage the tyre deck. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then six laps from the end, see, w- see what you got, and he won it. So, um, but we never won another race that year. But um, but Beto went on. I mean, when you just look at Beto's history with yes, with oh, Carrera Car, Beto, I mean, yeah, that, that's he, why I, yeah, I absolutely agree with you. Yeah, that's yeah, why yeah. I say that we never got the best out of him, and, yeah. uh, and it was more SBR than Craig Beard. Yeah, yeah. Oh well. Hmm. She stuck your hand up, but you're right. Yeah, but you've had some class drivers. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna throw a curly one at you because I look at that list. Yeah. Right. I look at that list and I, and I think right, who do you? And of course you're gonna say me, so I'll take myself out of that. <laughs> who, who, do, who do who do you reckon? Who do you regard? I mean, there's seriously quality drivers there, and mm. I reckon I'd have a hard time answering this. Who's the best driver that you've had through the place? Just on that list or total? Um, on that list. Well, total, well, we'll run on that title because we'll run it. I mean, a, your V8 supercar team yeah. owner yeah. career. Oh, I guess um, starting from Alan Jones, I suppose, if you want to go back yeah. that far. But well, Alan Jones, I always had uh, a lot of respect for. Mm-hmm. I seen him in um, Mid Ohio years ago, and in, in, um, Jackie X was driving for Carl Haas, and he had Le Mans, I think. And so Jonesy come in, and Rosberg was in Paul Newman's car. As I said before, I had respect from Rosberg back from my days. Yeah, yeah. And um, Jonesy uh, followed him and then got alongside him, passed him, and they got out of the cars. And Rosberg comes this way and Jones comes that way and they stopped right by where I was. And um, Rosberg said something along the lines, oh, that was a bit rough, that pass. And Jonesy said, do you want to sort it out over the back? <laughs> <laughs> so something, something like that. But, um, so Come I, from your school, dude. <laughs> so I always had enormous respect for Alan. And yep, um, yep. being in the team with him too, there was never crossword. He was, he was excellent to work with. Yeah. But then, then there was guys naturally talented like Crosby. He, he was really good on a on a two-wheel bike, you know, mm-hmm. on a GP bike, um, and, and a four-wheeler in a, in a car. He was excellent. Kept trying to put his knee out the door, but anyway. <laughs> um, but then, you know, you have guys that, that didn't have a lot of weaknesses, um, like Marcus. Yeah. Yep. And then yourself, you know, just out-and-out out out strong races, you know. So mm-hmm. everybody's different. Everybody's different. Yeah, so no, no single standout, just... Come on, can't sit on the fence. Pick one. Yeah. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> I, I know who I'd say, but anyway, you, 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 you go. There must be one. Oh, well, I guess on results you'd have to pick Marcus. Yeah, yeah, that's but what I'd pick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And, uh, and he was at the top of his game. He was pretty good special yeah. to watch back then, wasn't Yeah, he? and you had a bit to do with him. In and out of the car, there wasn't many weaknesses. He's a pretty straight shooter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And he was... To be honest, the deal nearly didn't happen with Marcus because 
we had agreed to everything and then a management team got behind him. So the day he came in to sign, the, yeah. the management team thought that he perhaps should have been flying a bit further forward on the plane. I've heard this story. You want to, I've heard this story before somewhere. Really? Yeah. Yeah. I've yeah. never heard not, it. Uh, not many people know about it. Yeah. But Is that right? Yeah. So I had a bit of a short fuse and didn't handle it as well as I could. And <laughs> so Marcus left without signing the contract. And then a third party, a guy by the name of Mark Roworth, who oh, yeah, had yeah. a long involvement, he, he actually cooled everything down. Marcus come back, we signed and never looked back. But wow. So, to, but he'd signed, he hadn't deal. tested the car. Yeah. You'd only seen him race a Honda yeah. Civic and was, around the Gold Coast. So it was just the attitude. You there just, must have been something there. Cause yeah, I oh, just the it wasn't the stopwatch. You didn't know yeah. what he was going to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. It is. that's amazing. <laughs> and to be honest, if you're a good Formula Ford racer, in those days you could go into supercars. Yeah, and for do sure. A, do a really that was a great. Yeah, if you yeah, run up yeah. front in Formula Ford, yeah, history shows you could adapt pretty quickly. Yeah. Quickly, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. you're telling you're telling big fans of Formula Ford here. Yeah, you know, like, but yeah. after that day, Marcus was absolutely excellent to deal with you know because of his rapid rise he had a new contract every year same as russell you know so. yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. no was, I, I totally agree with you i mean marcus was man he was yeah. he was strong everywhere and and you're right no weaknesses anywhere no no in or out of the car oh the only weakness he had is he liked he didn't like too much fan attention you know because yeah he, that's because he was so sure, sort of focused yeah. on what he was doing yeah, yeah. Which, something, um, something you loved. <laughs> yeah. you, were yeah, the you were the opposite. You like, were the opposite. Like today, yeah. Well, that's why you have drivers. They do all this. Yeah. 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 But you were, you were great with the fans. I mean, you, you, you wanted the fan reaction and, and interaction as well. Yeah. I, but, yeah. but you knew commercially that was what it's about. So. Yeah. And also, I guess, country upbringing, you know, you don't do to anybody else. You wouldn't want done to yourself. So, yeah. you know, you just look after people. Jeez, we gave you a few grey hairs over the years, though. Because I remember I was rolling back the tapes there of uh, Marcus and Greg Murphy at Bathurst that year when there was that tangle at the top. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then there was a certain incident in 2003 at Eastern Creek. Yeah. <laughs> well, the incident at Eastern Creek, it took me 12 months um, to get that sorted. Uh, the title sponsor was Caltex. Yeah, 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 yeah. And um, so they had a policy of uh, incident-free operations. Oh, really? Ah, that's yeah. when they started rolling in. Yeah, okay. yeah so uh, I had to write a book on how we were going to... Uh, yeah. Well, that's because Gafey was rolling around telling everyone you tried to kill him. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 Over, exactly. over dramatising yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 But yeah. in hindsight, for V8 racing, one of the better things to happen, um, yeah, you know... Got a lot of media. The, great. Uh, at the time, and we... <laughs> Yeah, got a lot of media. <laughs> we won our first championship that day, I think, mm. if I remember. Yeah. yeah. But at yeah. midnight, I'm still there with the stewards and and the 10,000 bucks we paid to get the uh, appeal um, come out of my pocket, not Russell. So. <laughs> <Whoops>. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Gee, hang on. I'll write you a check. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, that was, yeah, yeah, that was a big, big moment. The best part about that was when... Scafey bowls into the garage yeah. and he's fuming. He's looking and he goes to you and you, yeah. you just handle him like, uh, yeah. well, you, knew, you, you knew how to handle him. You, yeah, I, I played a lot of rugby and, yeah. and you know, and you tend to <laughs> learn how to look after yourself and I'm sort of pleased that I took the, the route that I did because the other one was to pull your arm back and, and you know, <laughs> snot him one. So, yeah. Yeah. But I reckon you could see it in your eyes. You yeah, like, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, all right, I've just better just cool my heels here. Uh, I think, I think, I think sometimes with him, there's a lot of bark and not much, too, too much bite. Anyway, yeah, it was, it was, yeah. it was good. Yeah, it was, yeah, it was, um, yeah. We, like I said, so sorry about that, Roscoe. Sorry, no. we gave you a bit of a. It was, uh, it was interesting. In, in times. hindsight, for the V8 supercar business, that 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 what you know helped the whole business. I yeah, thought yeah. you know made more people, uh, more eyeballs watch it and. That's what it needed. So going on the driver front, I mean, there was um, what Shane Van Gisberg had signed for you. Um, mm. That uh, thrilled the whole Erebus takeover that took a few curveballs yeah. a along the way there. Um, but there was a couple like him. Uh, well, he, he did race for you, but Mark Winterbottom and Scott McLaughlin, who raced for you in the development, 
yeah. never raced for you in the Well, in Mark, the Winterbottom, Mark Winterbottom, we actually put the deal together. Yeah. And he moved to the Gold Coast. He actually stayed with Di and I and yeah, yeah. kids for a while. Um, and uh, he didn't have to find any money. So we put that deal together. Yeah, so he won that Formula Ford. Ford had paid for him to do Formula Ford. He won that. Yes, that's right. Yeah. I don't think he won it. I think he was, was second or third. Anyway, so he got a deal. Yeah, yeah, got yeah, a deal. Ford yeah. was supporting young people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's right. And then, yeah. anyway, um, you know, just to, it all added up. We put it together. Really amazing um, opportunity. Yeah, and, yeah. and it was a couple of year deal, yeah. but he won it in his first year, and then I didn't have anywhere for him, you know. So then he went to luck. You, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and then the next year when Marcus was going, or a couple of years later when Marcus was going, Larko had phoned me and said that, that Mark was a big asset to his team and he was struggling, and so I gave him my word that we wouldn't, wouldn't poach... Um, Poach him back. Poach okay. him back, and we ended up with James. All right. Mm. And Scott McLaughlin never, he, he ran DVS for you, but Yeah, never, he, never... he won that championship, but yep. to be honest, there was a deal I wish I'd never done. Um, just the way it turned out. Scott wasn't a uh, director of Scott McLaughlin Racing, but yeah. that went bankrupt and funds weren't paid and stuff like that. So um, it's just that's, that's all for another day, you know? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, you still owed a few bucks then? Oh, yeah, just from that, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, That's yeah. a bit disappointing, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Yeah. Yeah. So you roll on, um, sell out, and end up selling Stone well, Brothers Racing or, or yeah. to, to Erebus, what, what is now Erebus Racing. And, yeah. Uh, that must have been a big decision, like, like well, after all it, those it, years. And yeah, it was, but it was also Jimmy and I... Um, went through and it was all about racing and winning and yeah. and anyway ryan madison who done work for betty came and sent us at the grand prix so it was early in the year yep yeah um and told me their plan of mercedes and everything else and so to do that they really needed a manufacturing team so they were limited mm -hmm. to and jimmy and i had had a good go at it yeah and you know there was there were years there where drivers were certainly getting paid a lot more than us, but engineers were and stuff. And then you just think, you know, it was just so consuming yeah, that, get to keep, yep. keep mm. it all rolling. Every year I always used to go back to work a week earlier than, um, than the team come back from what holidays you could give them. And I, I ended up working out how much an hour, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, it would cost to operate. And I got to a point where I thought, it's just, it's just you're just working to to keep feeding it, you know. Mm. And I think the timing was right. The timing was right. Yeah. Car of the future and and stuff like that. I'd really like to get your view on now. Yeah. I mean, now you've been you're on the other side of the fence now, and I know. Yeah. You're, um, you've been involved with a, a couple of other little projects, but looking at the other side of the fence, mm. number one, have you? You definitely did make the right call in your opinion. Yeah, yeah. And, I think and, and number two. Do you think it would ever get back to where it used to be in its height when you when you were running a team? Uh, well, first to answer your second question, mm. I, I don't think it'll get back because so much news and so much stuff is done online or streaming or whatever. So how it used to be then with free to air TV, a lot of eyeballs watching. Yep. Um, but the actual supercar business itself, I think the miles out of whack. Um, with the parity between us, with the Ford and the Holden and, and then obviously the Nissan. But um, the only reason that hasn't been adjusted more, in my opinion, is that Roland and Triple Eight are just not performing at the high level that they have in the past. And quite often they're not the fastest Holden. Yep. If they were fastest Holden day in and day out, this would have been sorted out. So um, I think the parity is not right, even though, you know, my background with this Ford, my background is also the V8 racing business, you know. Mm. And, um, you know, in the old days, you used to get back, as soon as you were back home, you'd get all the lap charts and you'd do all your times and everything was converted to a 60-second lap. And then if you were a tenth of a second advantage uh, over the... First three Fords against the first three Holdens, there was a right. change. The parity triggered a parity adjustment. Yeah, 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 yeah. Ab absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And, um, but as I said, I just think 
Triple Eight are not at the high standard that they have been in the past years, and uh, if they were continually the fastest hold, this would have been been um, adjusted earlier. Mm. It's interesting, though, isn't it? Is that you know we spoke about having races involved in the category. I reckon that's diminished a bit now, and especially on the board, and that's why we get to these sort of situations. Well, I think that it's become more bureaucratic. Like I was on the board with Ross, and it was. You, me, Larry Perkins, Roland representing the teams, mm -hmm. and you, stuff got done. Well, it got sorted out there, and got then. sorted out. Pretty often, yeah. you never walked out of there with knowing what direction you were going to do, yep. and, and yep. it was was and, and you hand on your heart. It was always best for the what's best for, for the, the business, business when you walked out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. It took your team hat off. Yeah, that, that's yeah. exactly right, Paul. Yeah. Yeah. That yeah. doesn't yeah. happen now, does it? Well, I don't know. I'm not, I'm not involved in it, but to yeah. me, the, the the commission looks like a toothless tiger. Yeah, it yeah, doesn't make smart decisions it takes to, you, it just seems like it's a bureau, bureaucratic mess yeah 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 nice no, interesting well roscoe it's been a it's been a great ride it's been great to be part of it yeah. personally as well but uh it's been so good to have you on and 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 going through your yeah. career both yourself and jimmy and your families and uh you must be very proud of it though everything you've achieved out of it and, and still achieving yeah it's been good and thanks for the invitation to come um we we done a uh, corporate ride day here at Norwell day yeah. uh, yesterday, and um, it was just a great facility, Paul. Thank and you. and all and the thing is, you can tell with organisations, the people that are involved, you know, that work for you, um, they're so good to deal with, and yeah. it just yeah. sort of shows how it all works. And um, always good to catch up, Russell. Now, I think you owe me a dinner, but anyway. I think I think I owe you, I think I owe you a couple of steaks. Yeah. <laughs> now, part of the deal is when any guest we have on here has to bring a vehicle of some sort. Now, it's their own choice what they bring. We don't prompt it at all, so no. you have to bring it. And uh, so the deal is, you we'll, we'll go out on the skid pan now, and you have to surprise us with what you've brought. So we've got no idea. And, I, I, uh, okay. Uh, I've got, I got, so, so, got to tell you yeah. that I'm not a big collector of you know, cars and stuff. So what we've got is what we got. <laughs> well, it's not a dirty old Escort or something, or a Cortina or something. I, don't know. What do you oh, got? I would have had to see Jimmy to get one of those. Yeah, OK. All right, so let's get out there and we'll, we'll have a look at what you brought. OK, cheers. Thanks, Jimmy. <laughs> well, dude, what do you think Ross is going to bring as a vehicle? I mean, think of all the stuff that he's got. Race cars? I reckon um, one of those Enforcer limited edition Falcons. Oh, what about the Red Devil? The Ambrose edition. The Ambrose edition, could have that. Falcon. Are you what, Falcon. What about one of his old race cars? Could have something like that. Formula Ford. Sounds like a bloody tractor. <laughs> what what the, maybe he's into <laughs> tractors like Larry Perkins. It sounds a bit rugged. What is it? Ah, look what he's brought. <laughs> <laughs> the Rossstone Racing <laughs> Super Ute. <laughs> oh, God. Well, it didn't sound like a, didn't sound like a V8, Roscoe. Right. I thought oh, it was Larry Perkins rolling up in his tractor. First, <laughs> first thing you've got to remember, it's not V8 racing. It's not V8, no, 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 definitely not. No. Um, so we know a little bit of uh, about this, uh, Roscoe. Yeah. Yeah. You... Well, bas basically, we upgrade the engines. Yeah. Bigger turbo, have sort of double the power a standard one has. Yeah. Same front brake size as a V8 supercar. So it's got 80 kilowatts instead of 40. <laughs> come on, run. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay, come yeah. on, we have to have a little bit. Yeah. It's pride and joy. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, mate. Sorry. Look how, hey, but one thing, look how beautifully presented it is. It you is. guys <laughs> always had immaculate race cars, and yeah. this is no different, is it? Yeah, well, no, they're good. <laughs> they're very, all the rear suspension on them is all common on every make, yeah. and the track is common on every make. And um, we have a side intrusion thing here that, um, when I got involved, I thought we needed to run, and yeah. so we built all that and supplied everybody. And so you're going to run a lap in this for us? Yep, yep. How long since you've raced, Ross? Oh, a long time, yeah. What do you um, reckon? What's the last time you... Hey, Russ, look what's in there, mate. What's that? Passenger seat. You're going for a ride. <laughs> <laughs> You're going for a ride. You can oh, drive. Yeah. I'm you not can, sure about this, yeah. Roscoe, because I, 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 all the shit you gave him when you drove for him, he's about to get even. I've, I've been to a few of your cars over the years too, and I thought, this could be bad for me. <laughs> I reckon <laughs> you are in. What yeah. do you reckon, Ross? When's the last time you were in a car, race car? Oh, some, turn I, some laps. I've I done, I think, all the Benson and Hedges at 500k race in a Commodore yeah. at Pukekohe in about 81, I think. 81? Yeah. 
No, uh, no, sorry. Yeah, I, uh, about then, yeah. Early 80s? Yeah, early 80s. Is this a good but idea? I, I finished, <laughs> it's been a while between drinks, Roscoe. Yeah, yeah, well, I finished all my single-seater stuff in 79. So, yeah, yeah. Yeah. All right, we're going to do it? Yeah, you're doing it. You're in there, mate. <laughs> Be coming? nice. He's going. Be nice. <laughs> you want right? to drive? No, no, you drive. No, 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 no. Jeez, I used to race for you, so we'll drive. Hey, I'll, I'll grab some helmets and we'll get all right, going. All right. Okay. I definitely want helmets. All right. Okay. To warm these things up, Russell, um, it takes about half an hour, but you run them and you get a little bit of boost into them and the temperature comes up pretty quick. Oh, does it? Yeah. <laughs> okay, great. Do we need more boost? Uh, not at the moment. <laughs> All right, Roscoe, so it's been 30 plus years before you raced a car. I used to race for you. Now you're getting your own back on me. <laughs> All right, let's see what let's see what you got. Oh, hang on it! No! Hang on to it! She's back there! <laughs> I told you it had no rear tyres. <laughs> <laughs> That'll do us, won't it? <laughs> oh, that's good, Roscoe. <laughs> hey, you didn't hit anything. Hey? You didn't hit anything. That's good. No, no. <laughs> I can if you want to. No, don't hit anything. All right, that's good. In here? Ah, it's driving oh, straight yeah. there. Thanks, Roscoe. No problem. <laughs> <laughs> hey, thanks for coming on too. It's uh, it's been bloody good. Trip down memory lane. Yep. So uh, the years flick by, Russell. They do. Mm. How good was it to have Ross? Yeah, yeah a, a legend. You know, it's pretty amazing where they've come from and what they did, building their own cars, and it's just. Uh, and the good thing about Ross, he's a guy that shakes your hand, you know, the deal's the deal, don't you? Yeah, just, old school. Yeah, old school. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, just, it's just really good. And, and hearing about his background, that's what, and that's a good thing about this program, you know. We don't want to, everyone knows what he's done, you know, in, in the last 10 years. Yeah. You know, we, want to, we want to dig back a bit deeper and, and find out good, what he was all good about. Good research there, Russ. Yeah, it was good. No, it was good. Yeah. It was good. And, and, and obviously it's a bit close to home as well because he got the championship that I never thought I was going to get. So yeah. being involved in part of that it was... It came second a lot of times. Yeah, so. it came second a hell of a lot of times. So, yeah. yeah, so it meant something to me as well. So, no, it was, it was great to have him great to have him on the show. And, uh, geez, I tell you what, he, he had me a bit worried when we had the lose in the year. <laughs> <in the back. laughs> he had a bit of wheel work going on. I reckon he was trying a bit harder because you remember? Uh, I, he, he sort of booted and got, and he started to get loose. And I thought, well, Roscoe, I hope you got this. But he was doing a bit of wheel shuffling, you know. I think we might have to get him back and put him through the, uh, get him on the, through the Norwell pan. School. Yeah, 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 I think he needs a bit of a touch-up, a bit of a tune-up. But, yeah, no, like I said, great to, great to have him. Uh, okay, now we're off to um, uh, our grassroots racing, brought to you by Greenfield Mowers. If you want your lawn cut, use a Greenfield's. She's ace, mate. Is that all right? Yeah, it's great. It's great. Right? great. <laughs> I'm getting better with these. They're going good. Hey, uh, Aussie racing cars, your favourite. Yeah, my favourite. Your favourite, favorite, mate. Yeah. I mean, uh, like, you've been racing them. How, how long have you been racing these things for? Oh, 15 years, I reckon. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's pretty cool. You do it yeah. for a reason. Yeah, I do it for fun. I even, I think, like, the last couple of years, I even raced supercars full time. I'd still race the Aussie car on the weekends. Yeah. It was just, just really enjoyable, good fun racing. That's right. All right. Yeah. Well, you've uh, you've arranged James Ward. Yep. Who runs the category. Yeah, he runs the category. And, and, and a handy peddler himself, by the way, as well. Good racer, yeah. James. Yeah. yeah. And a good guy. Yeah. He's so good he, guy. he's brought a few out. You've got yours out there. We're going to strip it down. Strip it down, give you a look. Mechanics. Yep. And, you never uh, know. You might even you. have a drive. You reckon? Well, no, it could be too many gears for me, mate. Oh, you'd be right. Might scare me a bit. All right, let's get out there and have a look. Okay. Now, dude, I know this is an absolute favourite of yours, the Aussie racing cars, because you've been racing them pretty well since the inception of it. Yeah, I've uh, probably 15 years. I've been, been running around in Aussie race cars in and out of the category a, a, f a few times, but, man, it's good racing, and that's why I love it. That's why I love it, for sure. Is that the attraction, though? Because, it, like, I know it's a crowd favourite. Like, wherever you see them, you see them at the, right here at the Gold Coast race. 
fans just, it's like the stadium trucks, fans just come to the fence watching it yep. because of the racing. Oh, because one of the best, probably I reckon the best race I've ever had in my life has been at Bathurst in one of these cars. Highlight of my whole racing career. So Unbelievable, true. mate. Yeah, <laughs> mind blowing. Yeah. Is yeah. that because all the towing? And all the towing and that. the strategy and, and, and because the cars are a little bit smaller, you can fit three or four wide and still go <laughs> fast. You know, if you look at uh, Moto3. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they're, they're pack racing. This is what you get with Aussie race okay. cars. So, again, we always we always look at all the, on this show about categories that produce good racing. Yep. You know, and uh, we've been talking about the TCR in that respect, and and Formula Ford just recently. Where we reckon we, I mean, we both know some of the best racing we've ever had is in Formula, Formula Ford. Ford. And and this is much the same is because and the good thing about it is you can everyone's on a level playing field and you can go out and get one of these and you know you've got a half a chance of winning a race. Yeah, you have. There's some adjustability in there as well, so you can tune the car a bit, which we'll, we'll go through later. But yep. And some good drive, like Nick Perkett did Aussie race cars and he's one of the best race, race craft drivers out there. That's so true. There's yeah. some, it's still a stepping stone if you want to learn race craft and car setup, it's a good thing to be doing. Yeah, so where, where did this come from? Like, like who, who was that show? Oh, it was the, Phil Ward. So yep. I remember Phil Ward. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and he was always the king of the small cars. Like he, he remember he had the Mercedes and the yep. Super Touring. He had Escort sports sedans before that. So yep. it was it was his invention and it started out as a as a corporate experience car for someone to go th go up through oh, from okay. a go kart. Yeah, but, yeah. But James is here, his son. Yeah. Who probably built most of these cars anyway. <laughs> so let's have a chat. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Hi, James. James Ward. How are you going? G'day, guys. Yeah. Good to meet you again. Now, yeah. so. You know how I said that I had the best race of my life at Bathurst? Yeah. I was racing him. <laughs> <laughs> Man, well, we yeah. had a good burn, didn't well, we? Well, James, yeah, same as Paul, you've been racing it ever since these things hit the bitumen. Yep. And, uh, and, and so good. I mean, like Paul said, the racing side of it's super good. But, yep. but for you, for someone that's been involved in actually maintaining them and promoting the category, uh, yep. just a, such a success story as well. Oh, you, it made, it's, been a, it's been a strong category for a long time. I've seen a lot of categories come and go. Um, it ticks a lot of the boxes, this category, that a lot of other categories don't tick. You guys spoke a lot about the racing, and the racing's awesome. It is, yep, and, and yep. the cars are always designed to race well. They're nimble, you can pass, you can brake late, you can do all the stuff you need to do to be able to race well. Yep. But on top of that, they give you a ball pump when you race them. <laughs> <laughs> they've, got, yeah. Yeah. they've got heat, they've got good sound, they've yeah, got yeah. good grip. You, the harder you thrash it, the better it rewards you. It's not yeah. one of these kind of cars that you get in and you're looking after the tyres, you're looking after the brakes. If you're, if you're going to go out there and look after the car, yep. you're going to come last. You know <laughs> what I mean? If you, you, yeah. This is a top 10 shootout from lap 1 to lap 10 every race, every weekend. So you just keep up the whole time? As hard yeah. as you can. You're not blowing the tyres off it. Yeah. Yep. And if you, if you lift or relax for just a moment, yep. three guys will pass you every time. Now, take us through yep. some of the mechanics of this. Step, step around the back there and, and, and show us, because I, I get a lot of questions about what engines are in these. So give us a rundown of the actual engine itself. So this is a Yamaha XJR 1300 bike engine. Yep. Uh, basically standard, the only thing we change is uh, the, the water barrel. They're yep. a controlled sealed engine. Uh, Craig Haystead Engineering builds all the engines for everyone in the category. So one engine builder? Yeah, one yep, engine okay. builder. They come sealed. Yep. Uh, we have a, a horsepower rating. No engine goes above that. Okay. Um, similar to what the v he does, the V8 Supercar Parity also. Yep. Yep. So yeah, so it's the same yeah, deal right. as that. Same, yeah, okay. same deal as a few right. other categories have used. Um, and basically, so the engine unit you don't have to worry about. You you just drop it off, you get it done, and you'll have the same as what the best guys have got. Um, gearbox wise. Gearbox wise, the gearbox is in the engine, so yep. it's a sequential gearbox. There's obviously no clutches for shifting or anything like that. So yep. super fast changes, just off the throttle, bang it through the gears. The same okay. as a supercar. Yeah. Sequential. Yeah. Lift, so, and, lift so, and shift. So it's a motorbike sort of shifting, but just with a lever instead of using your foot. Yeah. Basically. Yeah, yep, exactly right. Hooks yeah. up to the same yeah. same mechanism. So if you've ridden a motorbike, yep. you could drive one of these. The I timing. Mean, you know, the, the timing, timing and that and sort of all thing. That, yeah, 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 you'll pick yeah. it up straight away. Yeah, okay. Um, now, suspension wise as well, because, you yeah, know, misconception that people think these are a go kart. Yeah, that is a big misconception. But they're not. Yeah, yeah go kart haven't got shockers or springs. Yeah. These have got shockers, have. springs, roll bars, yep. all that. So for, for a start, they're they're 595 kilos with the driver. Okay. So that's a big step in weight. Probably they're heavier than the Formula Ford. So the light guys are ballasted up. Light guys are all ballasted up to that weight. Yep. Um, and then on top of that, so you get things like squat under acceleration. The, the thing will dive when you brake. Yep. Uh, they they hike wheels. They 
they do all the things that a, that a touring car does. Um, they probably even give you more of a touring car feel than even an open wheeler probably. Oh, I 100% you know. agree with that. Yeah. 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 So, and, and they'll two wheel, if you, if you ride a ripple strip, they'll run on two wheels and they'll do the stuff that a touring car yeah. does because they're basically like they grip and feel like an open wheeler, but they're a bit more of a... So tun tuning wise as a driver, you've got your yeah. front anti roll bar you yes. can play with. Yep. Yep. Uh, ride heights. Right. Uh, shock pressures. And, so it's all, and it's all, so, so we... Springs are controlled though. Because when we did the Formula Ford, yeah, and we did the breakdown how that teaches drivers, mechanics and engineers about racing car chassis and engineering um this is probably a a, a, a more of a level to a saloon car yeah Would very right? yeah yeah probably probably very similar but um the one thing when we look at the back of this car you can adjust the rear roll center with a pan hard rod okay. so that that's tunable as well so right. there's a lot of things you can <laughs> learn on this car if you're going to go v8 supercar racing that that teaches you about how to tune the car which is what i like about right. it so yeah, again yeah. for a young guy that's coming into it uh, and, and even, we, call, we always talk about drivers, but also about mechanics and engineers that, that want to go down that path in motorsport. This is a great category to learn about all that. Yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah. And like and all the stuff you learn in this, it, I believe, does transfer over to any other car that you race. At the end of the day, every car's four wheels and a steering wheel. Yeah. There's enough adjustments there and the chassis and everything's stiff enough for you to feel the, the changes that you make as a driver yep, yeah. and, sure. you, and you can see a difference in your lap times or in the way that the car performs. So yes, you can use it to learn mm -hmm. about setup as well, you know, and um, yeah, so there's, it definitely out. transfers, I think. Yep. Well, let's look in the back as well, because that's, uh, that's pretty interesting as well, because we've got... Um, Go over to this car. Uh, got so a, safety wise. So safety wise, and obviously um, safety's a massive issue in motorsport no matter what so we always want to make things safer and this has actually got a, a proper fuel cell in the car as well yeah it's fuel you know safe, so yeah. a collapsible cell so if you if you get an impact from the rear no problems it'll actually deflect and yep and, yep uh, yeah you can take a fair bit of a hit with that and uh, it'll still be safe that's got a bladder in it and all that sort of stuff um i think most race most like race categories now mandate that type of a fuel cell yeah yeah so uh, we've gone to that as well and um you know, and you can see in the back here, there's a, there's, it's a live rear axle, which is yeah. the, the same as the old project blueprint style yeah, V8 supercar. Yep, yep, yep. Okay, yeah. yep. uh, parallel trailing arms. Same as a supercar. Same as a and super that's a panhard rod, rod you were talking down. about? Yep. Panhard so rod, yep. so we don't have a watts linkage, we run a panhard instead of a right. watts linkage, uh, but you can same adjust. Same as a NASCAR, Russ. Yeah, okay, exactly yeah. the same. Yeah. It's pretty cool, yeah. isn't it? Actually, I was asking you, Paul, about, there's a starter motor on the left rear wheel there. That's actually for reverse gear. Yeah, it is, yeah. So there's no reverse in the gearbox. Yeah. So it's an electric reverse. Push a button down and, and that will back, back you up. up. Yeah. And cams requires you to have reverse. Yeah, yes. you need reverse. A reverse, so that's what it is. Yep. That Start was... a motor on a gear and that, if you're in trouble, in a fence, hit that and out your back. Exactly right, yep, yep, That's yep. incredible. Now yeah. let's go inside as well. Let's have a bit of a bit of a scan inside because you've got a, a Motec style dash inside the car as well. Yeah, yeah. electronic dash. Electronic dash, so you can do lap times. Uh, and there's a little bit of data in there, not too much to, to get people too hung up on it. But there's so, so what's available there for? Um, you got you can do a speed trace. You can okay. do like you can have a look at your race lines and overlay it over yeah. somebody else. GPS. A bit GPS like your V box in the Toyota. Pretty ATX's. similar, yeah. yeah okay. Enough yeah. there to, to to help some guys. Like if you, if you want to share some data around some people and get some guys going, which which one thing you do find the camaraderie between all the teams that race and that is, yep. is really good. So there's a lot of information sharing and everyone's helping each other. So Grassroots racing. It's, it's a pretty cool thing to be involved yep. with. Okay, so uh, <laughs> give me a rundown on cost. So uh, that's a brand new Mustang you have yep. over there, brand shiny new. If I wanted to buy that, what's the cost of that if I rolled in through your front door? A brand new car, $60,000. Right. Turnkey, ready, ready to race. Ready to roll, yep. And, uh, and that car, you can roll it out on the track and race it as is ready to go. Um, then. You don't really need to carry any spares for the car okay. because we we bring Got spares it. to the track. We bring a truck with with engines and and disc rotors and <laughs> control arms. <laughs> I know what you're Good. thinking. Are you? I know what you're thinking. Good, uh, yeah, yeah. Well, we, we spoke about that's what supercars should so be doing. Common yeah, yeah. common source. If there was more common parts on a supercar, 
Yep. They could roll up with a truck, the, the association itself, uh, and they carry the spares and teams wouldn't have to carry spares. Yeah, that's... It's a big cost. It is. A, if everybody has their own individual spares, it just... It's a lot of capital tied up. It is, yeah. 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 And, um, and, a, and to run a season, um, how many races and to run a season cost? Okay, so it's between seven and eight rounds, normally eight rounds. Yep. And um, look, to run a whole season, I would say you're, you're, you're looking at seventy or $80,000. Right. Um, some people spend more than that, some people let, uh, spend less. Like, even though we bring all our own spares, some teams are the Red Bull of Aussie race cars and they'll <laughs> yeah. have spare engines and spare bonnets yeah. and okay. spare chassis and blah, blah, blah. Right. Um, whereas you also get the father and son some teams. with the car on a box yeah. trailer. Yeah. And the great thing about it is having the extra money doesn't really give you an advantage. And in in the last three or four seasons, we've had champions who are just the father and son team and that's what we, perfect. we yeah. have yeah yeah, perfect. yeah. good <laughs> so it comes down to this and this and that's right yeah. Yeah, yeah look yeah. if you can drive you can win that's yeah, what i tell okay. people and, and let's face it i mean uh, some people in karting are spending over a hundred thousand a year absolutely so yeah. in the whole scheme of things that's pretty good value yeah well you, again your biggest cost of racing in australia is logistics it's getting around the joint getting around yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. so yeah. Yeah. that's probably the biggest <laughs> cost of this category yeah yeah oh that's great and yeah. the other good thing about it you're at all the good supercar rounds and you've got good TV. Yep. So it makes it easier to get sponsorship around around the car. And in front of a good audience. In front of a good audience, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I can see why you love it. <laughs> it's a good category. Yeah, well, yeah. You, I mean, you, you race. You raced at the bench. You put on a, weeks, yeah. on a really good car race and you're at the, like, you're at the well, last race we had was in Adelaide at Tail and Bend and everyone's on the fence cheering you. Yeah, 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 yeah. You put on a show and people enjoy it. Yeah, so it's, it's very rewarding. It's all about well, racing in it. It actually, yeah. it actually is rewarding. And um, something I noticed, I raced these things for 15 years. Uh, and then when Tony Quinn bought the business, I've spent a lot of time on the other side of the fence watching the racing. I, I got a real buzz out of racing the cars. I always got out and I said so many times, and I remember even high-fiving you out the window after races yeah. saying that was the best race of my life. Yeah. And then, I got out of the car and I was on the other side of the fence and I would go and sit in grandstairs and it gave me a buzz to see everyone coming to the fence when the Aussie cars came out and yeah, it also yeah. gives me a buzz when you see a father sitting next to his son, which I've heard a few times, telling yeah. their son, Whoa, don't go, don't go to the shop, watch these things, watch these yeah, things. Yeah, 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 and yeah. so the fathers have got their sons up at the fence. Perfect. Yeah. And yep. I'm saying that, the kids love them. Like in yeah, the yeah, pits, yeah, yeah. there's always just... Kids love these that's things. That's right, yeah. yeah. Just the look of them um, <laughs> yeah. and different shapes and yeah. that. I mean, that's great. Hey, thanks, James. Thanks for, no worries. Thank thanks you, for guys. coming out and bringing the toys out. You're going to have a drive? Do you want to have a drive? Well, you got it, mate. You reckon it'll be all right? We'd, yeah, mate. Yeah. Get in there. We weren't going to drive it. We could have You've shot this one before. local park or something. <laughs> 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 all right. All right. I'll get the open face on. Yeah, all right. Game on. <laughs> All right, here we go. First laps in the uh, Aussie racing car. I wonder, uh, I wonder if this thing does burnouts. Dude reckons it does. We want to try it. All right, let's give it a go. Okay, here we go. Really direct steering. Okay, get behind a bit here. Got it stiffly sprung. The gearbox is supposed to be hard to use, but I actually find it not too bad. Alright. Warming it up a little bit. Here we go. Left foot braking.
not uh, interested in getting into motorsport. Driving hard, battling hard. You could do a lot worse than drive one of these Aussie racing cars. Bloody, bloody good. Yeah, good. They're <laughs> a good thing, aren't they? Good. I'll tell you what, I can see why you like racing these things. Pretty good, isn't it? And imagine like 35 of them, five wide, going down Bathurst, Comrade. Right. It's got plenty of power, hasn't it? Plenty of power. <laughs> Once you get used to the gear shift, you've got to give it a bit of a blip, but that's fine. Um, really good. It's just, biggest thing is you have to keep, James is right, you have to keep up, up you it. You've got to keep, keep digging. Keep pedaling. <laughs> That's bloody good. Highly recommended. Jeez, that was good, wasn't it? The good, eh? cars. Yeah, yeah. It's good to know the mechanics of it too. There's actually a few things that I didn't know about the cars as well. You got after it too, didn't you? Yeah, you got after it a bit. Yeah, it was good once you start. It's, it's. I thought you were going to hang out the door and rep replicate your championship winning burnout. I tried to. Did that, yeah, but I reckon I would have fallen out. <laughs> would have gone down the road. I would have been sitting on the bitumen while the thing was snaking <laughs> down, down the road. The road. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But no, the really good thing. I, I mean, and and I see what. James and yourself meant you have to keep on the gas or you just have to keep pushing it. It's it's, it's just yeah, just keep ripping. Keeps giving, doesn't yeah, it? Like yeah. the harder you push it, the more it rewards you. It so does. Not, not too many categories got that. So that's great. So I hope uh, anyone that's interested in doing that, um, they've uh, Aussie Racing Cars has got a website. Make sure you jump on that. Check it all out. And uh, and James um, will uh, will fill you in about all of that because like I said, he he runs a thing. Or oh, Brad Ward as well, his brother. And uh, get on there. All the information's on there, so if you're interested in getting into that category, look it up, so that'd be good. Uh, Rightio, uh, fan comments, one of our favourite ones, and they've been firing in, thanks to our fans once again for sending everything in. And, and we always say thank you for being respectful as well. No haters. Uh, no, Love I, it. I mean, I'm probably one of the only online sites that I see so many of the comments um, are either giving us ideas what to do with the show, yep. or potential ideas, uh, and, and it's like, all our fans are, are, are part of the show, you know, they're part of the team, which is fantastic. So that's exactly what we want, and uh, no one doing anything stupid, so it's great. Keep it up, guys. Thank um, you. So right here, we've got Ben Parker, uh, oh, Russ right, dude. Uh, I'm keen on coming over next year and watching around of the V8 Supercars. Which venue, uh, this is coming from New Zealand, um, Kiwi fan, uh, Kiwi fan of the dude, hashtag. Uh, V8 Supercars, which venue do you recommend for a first-timer to get a good experience and value for money? What do you think? Well, he's coming from New Zealand. Yeah. A good experience. Sandown's good. You can see the whole track. Yeah. Yeah. But what about what about Sandown now not being part, oh, not being the first? That doesn't matter no, too I much. I don't think so. Yeah, that good grandstand. You can see the whole circuit. You can get around. Yeah. Um, what about Newcastle? Newcastle's good, but it, the G the GA's hard there. You know. Is it? Can't see much. Yeah. If if you're in there and you want to. The thing I like about Sandown, you can watch the race, you can see the whole track and you can work out yep. what's going on. You can yep. even see the cars come in and out of the pits. So if you're in there for the racing, to me that's the yep. that's a track where you can... And easier from New Zealand to get there. Yeah, straight in. Straight in. Where yep. Adelaide, Adelaide's probably a bit the same problem. You don't see a lot of the track as well, do you? Being a street circuit. Well, Clipsal is a great Clipsal. event. It like, is a great event. Yeah. yeah. If, if you want to get involved in, a, in an event, though, yep. that's... So That's I suppose to break it down, we need to go, yeah. if you want atmosphere, Adelaide's, Adelaide's Adelaide's pretty hard to beat. That's one of the best motorsport events in the world. Yeah, it's pretty, yeah. It's pretty cool. Yeah. If you want to just see racing, the raw racing without all the glitz, glamour and fanfare. Yeah, and understand well, what's happening. And understand Sandown's probably, very good. probably pretty good, especially across the back straight there because you, you can... Great viewing spots off the end of the back straight yeah. and they're damn fast coming off there, like into turn six. It's a good one. Yeah, that's not a bad one. So I uh, hope that helps out, Ben, uh, either one of them. Uh, Patrick Haynes, um, when racing, uh, why did you always move your head, oh, this is obviously directed to me, towards the opposite direction to the corner? You and Van Gisberg are the only ones to do it, I've noticed. Um, so doing the, like this, you know, you're turning around a right-hander, but your head's turning left. Yeah, well, so, so it could be the sometimes the pillar of the car's there and you're just trying to get a look at Yeah, I don't. I, I think it was a cart thing. Was I, it? I, I started doing Patrick. I think it was in the cart days I always used to do. I don't know whether it's almost like, um, you know, like a chippy or something's lining up a, 
you know, doing the lining up a directive line, you know, or like a lining up a piece of timber or something, you know, and they're doing this. I think, I think it's a bit of that. Well, I'm sort of lining up a corner and I, for some reason I just do it that way to, to line up where I'm heading. Because you know yourself with training, where you look is where you go. Where you look is where you go. And then to add a little bit to that, um, you, you, you're looking where you want to go and you're basically taking a mental photograph of, of that yeah. and then you're retaining that in your memory, then you're looking at the next looking corner, at, aren't yeah. you? Always looking ahead. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, yeah. you do sometimes look out the side window or look in a different spot, even though the track's still going that way, you could be looking across the grass to where the where you want to go. So you're just observing, really. Just, just, yeah, 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 good point. Gather, yeah, yeah. Gathering some, information. Some of it's unconscious, because I've looked at it, obviously, yeah. in car, and I'm going, geez, what? I didn't, you don't realise you're doing it. Yeah. And I'm sure Shane doesn't either, but I, I don't know why. I think, I think it's just you know, like, like a bit of that, that it's always, you're always looking ahead. And I think it's so important for any race driver uh, coming up through the categories is, man, don't Vision, look, Vision's the most important yeah, thing. Yeah, don't look at the end of the bonnet, look down the road, because that's where the crash is usually happening, so especially if you're avoiding stuff. <laughs> um, Ryan Hardy, uh, your cost-cutting segments were quite informative. However, what about those guys and girls whose engineering jobs will disappear? Should these people be fearing the future? Will Australians see less engineers on the world stage in coming years? Uh, will this be a negative side of effect? This is o over the cost-cutting and probably to add in that when we have Boris said on there, that said um, uh, it was a two and a half thousand fabricators in America will probably lose yeah, their jobs yeah. when NASCAR starts their cost cutting and go to composite. Uh, it's a really good question, but um, so I'll, I'll leave that leave that one on to you, Paul. Right. Well, it's, you need to, sure, there's some people are gonna be, jobs are gonna go, but if you don't, everyone's job's gonna go. Yeah. So um, it's just, you know, there's, there's too many people employed down pit lane, so you can still race without those people, it's unfortunate. But that's just the way it's going to be, you know. Well, I suppose you've got to look at it to uh, no, no other, uh, to any other type of business. Yeah. You know, in, in, in respect that, you know, if you've got a retail outlet, so you go, I'm probably going to earn more money if I just wholesale. If I keep my retail open, I'm probably going to go broke. What do I want to do? Send the whole company broke or try and, well, or try and at least survive? Yeah, and, so. and the most expensive thing... To, to have in Australia is people working for you because yep. you've got employment and you've got super, then they got you got all these things that just add on and add on and so yeah. it's it's you'd love to be in an environment where you could just bolt more people on but, but it's a big cost. But there's I mean I mean jobs as far as I mean there's a lot of there's a lot of turnover in motorsport anyway as far as personnel go. You're true. Because most it, people it's, it's a hard gig. Yeah, it's a hard at gig. At that top level you get burned out pretty quick. Yeah, so they're usually yeah. going and usually anyone with supercars experience or motorsport experience find it quite easily to get jobs in dealerships or whatever. And the, to be quite honest, probably the pay's better. Yeah. when they go to those sort of jobs as well. A lot less stressful. So so they get the knowledge. So I don't think they're going to have any problems in finding employment. Well, the bottom you know, line so is so. the teams are losing money now. Yeah. So they, you can't just keep people in, in a job you can't. and keep losing money. That's just simple well, your economics. Wage, your wage bill is <laughs> the biggest number. Yep. Writing that every, every week, every month. Man, that hurts. So... Yeah, unfortunately they can't, but I, I don't think there'll be any problem with them long term. Uh, that, like I said, people usually favour mechanics, engineers, people with skills from motorsport because they usually are very talented. So they'll have no problems in, in finding work if, if and when that happens. So. The good ones won't be without a job. No, not at all. Um, from Brad, uh, great episode again, lads. Uh, love the guest as well, being Boris. I uh, do have a question. Uh, is there a drive for a team you said no to in your career that you wish you hadn't? So, is there is there anyone that you've said you've been offered a drive? Yeah, or? I did once. Yeah, I got, I went to uh, Macau, two thousand, I think. I had a factory BMW drive at Macau, and I elected to go to Bathurst instead. Yeah, but I I should have should have grabbed the Macau. Yeah, I should have gone to Macau. Fantastic. Because I won there the year before, and I thought, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, for me, it's uh, I, I made a. When I was racing overseas in open wheelers, I made a fundamental error because I, I, I never had managers and a fleet of, you know, hangers on. I always did my own deals and... Uh, well, I've been, Julie I've, then, I've been, Oh, Julie, yeah, yeah. Yeah, she used to maintain. She used to yeah, keep, keep me level. She did a fair bit of work then. <laughs> yeah, yeah, probably more she gets credit for. <laughs> yeah. um, but uh, I raced Formula 3 in, in Germany in 1992 yep. there and... Uh, uh, was running running pretty strong there and it pricked up a few years because the team always wasn't a particularly good team. 
Um, and I've had a chance there to go to the Volkswagen factory Formula 3 team. Yep. Uh, but I also got an offer a deal from to Van Diemen to run their new Formula 3 project. Oh, right. uh, so I took was that. Ralph Furman? In Ralph the... Furman yeah. was running that, built a Formula 3 car. Yeah. Uh, and I actually raced at Macau and was running in That's fifth right. before I crashed actually with David Coulthard. It was Ralph Bellamy the engineer. Ralph Bellamy engineered it. He, That's right. <laughs> he engineered it. We, we were almost dead last. He came up with a demon tweak overnight. Yeah. And I went from last to, I, I was challenging for fifth with yeah. David Coulthard and we ended up shunting. Um, that's how much of a change Ralph Bellamy made. So, yeah. um, but it was so on going on the back of that, I thought this might be a good thing. I wanted to get back to Britain to race there because I thought it would be a better deal. Uh, went back to Britain, whole Formula Three uh, had a backer for it, a Japanese backer, poured out at the last minute, and I ended up racing the ZTEC Formula Four Championship, which I won. Yeah, that year. Which could um, have been factory boy. But yeah, it would have been a factory deal. And the drive drive that I knocked back in Germany. The driver that they picked won that, won the German F3 championship, uh, went on to sports cars, and I don't know where we ended up with that, but oh, yeah, well. just anyway, long time. Your yeah, life. yeah, long time, but anyway, so so that answers your question. Have yes, you got I, over that yet? You I sound like you're still a bit worried about it. Oh, it would have, mate, but there's lots of things. I mean, yeah, hang on to shit for a long time. I do, you, I do. That, that, it's only been 30 years, mate. <laughs> <laughs> it's only been 30 years. <laughs> yeah, I got to, I got to, I got to see someone about that. I don't know what it is. It must be a psychiatrist or some crap. Jesus. Um, you, uh, this is from O five G G L M. You blokes going to do a show at the mountain? Oh, you're trying to get me to go there, but I, I, I don't know how we're going to do it. If we do it, we could do it on someone's private property. Yeah, supercars won't like it if we do it. We can't film in the circuit. Well, you've got to work out whether you're going yet or not. So. Yeah, I know. There is a guy. What about that guy on the mountain there? He's got that house right inside the circuit. Yeah, yeah there's plenty of places. Uh, one of Bowie's mates. and uh, he's, he's a good dude. Yeah, I don't know. know. We'll have to look into it. Anyway, we're looking into it. We'll, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll just we'll go down to the pub and have a beer and see who turns up. Yeah, or we just go to the pub <laughs> yeah, with a handy cam. So, yeah, that, that could be the guy. Uh, question for a force of the dude. Um, this is from Corey Black. Uh, could it? Uh, could it be possible, given the popularity rise of Black Pain GT series, that they hold a 24-hour race at Black Pain? So Black Pain is a GT series that runs long-distance races, including 24-hour races yeah. in Europe. Well, I wouldn't say um, it's popular. Uh, well, well there's a, they get a few cars there. Yeah, but no one watching it. No one watching it. No, <laughs> well, no. the only race where people turn up to watch is Bathurst. But Yeah. You go to any of those other races and there's not many people there. True. Yeah. But... Would a 24-hour race work at Bathurst? Oh, 100%. Do you reckon it'd be right? Yeah, it'd be fantastic. It'd be pretty wild. Yeah. I reckon it'd be a real good thing. Plenty of GT yeah. cars kicking around yeah, at the moment doing before. nothing. Yeah, so. I've done two of them at Bathurst back in the day, so... Yeah, I reckon it'd be a really good thing. So, yeah, as far as a race spectacle, yeah, I reckon it'd be a bloody good thing. Um, maybe when GTs sort their act out, whenever and if that ever happens, um, there's plenty of GT cars kicking around Australia in sheds collecting rust. So... Uh, It'd be a yeah. bloody good thing to do. Might be good. Yeah, yeah. it had to be a GT car, wouldn't it? Because what else would survive 24 hours? TCR. Yeah. Would they survive 24 hours of yeah, flogging around? Yeah. They're small tanks, you'd make about 80 pit stops. Yeah, that would be right. Make it exciting. Yeah, be all right. Uh, OK, so that's, uh, that's us. Thanks again for the questions. Make sure you keep them coming because uh, we want to uh, want to make sure we we uh, try and ask it, answer as many as we can. Um, Radio, dude's life message. Just before we wrap up, I right. uh, hope you got a good one for us. I got a simple one for you, mate. Have you? Because I've always been crackers. So, the more you know, the faster you go. The more you know, the faster you go. Yep. Okay. Hence the driver training. All that. More, yeah, yeah, okay. All that. I know, and you're experiencing that with the with the Audi TCR car. Yeah, yeah. The more you learn about the car, the more you get involved in what's happening. Understand your tyre pressures. The, all those simple information things that drivers used to use aren't used anymore. They're relying on yeah. engineers and other people. And yeah, okay. I've been speaking to you, and you've been hands-on developing that car yeah. and understanding about it. Not by laptops. No. And the more you know as a driver, the faster yeah. you go. Very good point. Yeah. Yeah, very good point. Sometimes <laughs> more technology isn't a good thing. Get in there, no get reason. your hands dirty, understand what's going on with your own car, you'll go faster. Yeah, that's an interesting. Very good one. Ah, knowledgeable one. That's, yep. uh, we like that. Hey, um, look, also, I'd like to introduce our new partner, Sudow Australia, actually, who make uh, bonding products, silicon sealants. Beautiful. Um, so they're, uh, they've come on board. 
Um, and uh, that's fantastic because the more partners we can get involved in this, the more we can do, like going to Bathurst and all those sort of things. So the more we get in, the better. So thanks very much to Sidow. You'll be seeing them um, for the rest of the year on. So they've fantastic. joined the Thank rest you. of our partners, being uh, Castrol, DPO as well. You know, So all, all these that have come on board, just absolutely fantastic. Really appreciate it. And uh, obviously we're making a bit of an impact. So uh, And they're liking it as much as we are. The so. numbers don't lie, mate. We've yeah. got good viewership. A lot of tradies, a lot of tradies watch our show, so um, yeah, that's all right. They all use the Sadao product. So, so anyone, anyone you see associated with the show, what we'd ask you to do is, you know, to keep us on the road, keep us coming at you, is to support them, support the people that support us. If you can do that, that's all we ask. A bit bloody fantastic. So, thanks, dude. Um, right, we've got some, uh, we've got some pretty cool stuff coming up in the pipeline. I'm, I'm planning a road trip. Yeah, it's on, eh? Yeah, I think it's on. I've been working on something pretty big, and uh, I reckon I've got it across the line. So we're, uh, we're going on the road. We're doing a bit of a road trip and uh, going to interview a couple of... Oh, I'm not going to say too much, but it's going to be cool. So stay tuned for that. Be I'm looking forward soon. to getting on the road. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks, dude. See you, mate. See you next time around, bud. Okay, thanks, guys. Make sure you come back.